All right, so as I'm recording this, we've actually finished winter practice four. So I'm gonna go back and show you a quick little couple of clips from three. I'm gonna put some tire stencils on, I'm gonna bleed the brakes, and I'm gonna show you winter practice four, which was really good. I'll have new tires. If you go to the first event, I'll have tires. Oh, oh, Just Close take your helmet. Oh, that was so good. How does your car stay this reliable when you're feeding on it like that so much? Daryl's does too. I don't know. All right. So the last winter practice was pretty good. You saw some clips there. Uh, definitely, you know, battling some traffic here and there. Overall lap wasn't great, but the Nanking Air ones I've had have probably got seven, eight, nine, maybe like ten events on them. Uh, Definitely the car is coming around a bit more than it used to. It is what it is. So we're gonna start a new season. We're gonna get some new tires. So here's what we got already. I decided to go with the Nexen and Farah Sport R's. So as you already see, there's tire stencils. And if you recall the last one they did, they're already like kind of faded and gone there. Now I had been using the original, like way back I used the color match aerosol that I got from the company Automotive Touch-Up. I can look at the can. I don't know if it's an acrylic, an enamel, whatever, but after that, I ran out, and since then, I've always been using rust -oleans, and they never seem to last. I understand that. It doesn't need to last 100%. I kind of like the old grungy look on the tire after a while, but I've got some more of the automotive touch-up stuff, so we're going to go back. That's what that is, and we're going to see if this lasts a little bit, and if it doesn't, it is what it is. It takes me maybe 10 minutes a wheel max. When I'm doing them all together, they go by pretty quick. So, in case you last video, what I'm going to do to the wheel is, just grab some invisible glass, something similar, and I just... After it's been mounted, I just clean the entire wheel with it. Yeah, we'll just kind of, unnecessary here, but save me from washing it. Let it sit there for a second. And then I'm going to just wipe around it. Just wipe it off. Something special is the stencil that I made on my Cricut. Just gonna pull this back. Kind of line the center up first as much as I can, and then and then once it's on there, just kind of make sure. I mean, it's just a sticker, right? But if it does stick. But obviously, the better that you can get it to adhere and stick to it the better your lines would be and everything else. All right, it's been sitting on there for a second. I did the other one. Now we're gonna gently peel this back.
I've got a little stencil cut out here, but uh, it's pretty close to size, but it's not that good. So I'll just take some quick blue masking tape. This doesn't have to be pretty, it just needs to fit. There you go, there's one done. So I'm gonna repeat that to the second side. All right, this is what it looks like. Here's my little like the stencil paper. I'm using this color match. This is the paint I've been using for like almost everything. So it's the color match to my car. And I just do three kind of quick coats here. That's it for one. I'm trying to do this with one hand. Excuse me while we at least spray paint away from the cars and everything. That one was a little heavier, but I'll give it about a minute. We'll do two, we'll do three total coats, minute between each. All right, so I bought an S Motive Pro power bleeder. Um, and it came with this cap, which we'll get to, I think might fit on my Hush little reservoir, maybe, I don't know. And then I bought this, I'll put it in the description what size this is. Now, it does fit my ITR Master, um, but I had to remove the little strainer that was in there for it to fit. So first and foremost, I'm going to drain whatever brake fluid is in there. So I assembled a little bottle and I'm just sorta squeezing. If you got a turkey baster, Probably easier, but I'm just gonna sit here for a minute. And we're gonna keep doing that till I get all of it out of there. All right, so I drained it and then kind of topped it off a bit with, this is the brake fluid I've been using. There's tons of stuff out there. There's better stuff, worse stuff. I'm not gonna get in that argument. This is what I've been using and it's been working. So, topped it off with that. I'm gonna take this cap and it's got two O-rings on it. If we can. It doesn't give the audible like click like the other one but it's there. So now I've read, you know, before I start filling this up with fluid, let's make sure it actually holds pressure. So it's like a nice little stand here for it. I do like, I think I like, at least it's got a, like, you know, a little quick disconnect nipple. So we're just gonna, there we go. Everything is closed. And let's just pump this up here. Again, I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. All right, it's hard to do everything with one hand. So I'm just gonna kind of pump this up now. See the whole pressure it is building now. The instructions say 10 to 15. I don't hear any audible leaks, but that was 10. That's 15. I don't hear anything. Appears to be doing pretty good. All right, so has a nice little release valve right here. Just gonna push it. So there it is. And it said not to, I didn't see anything about putting brake fluid in that. So I'm not. And I already got that attached. Let's see if.
And there's no bubbles in it. We'll just lock that. Let's go see real quick how much this dropped. I'm sure it did. Not terribly. Probably took out of there. I guess honestly, let's just pump it up a little bit more. All right, and let's do it one more time. Just to Okay, it looks real clear. Okay, I took all of it out of there, so all I'm doing is flushing old stuff into the line here. Let's see. Well, putting new stuff, I should say, into the line. Okay. All right, let me just wipe that little bit up there that it seeped around there, but pretty good, I'd say. All right, so what we just did that was actually if you just wanted to bleed the brakes real quick. But if you were gonna do a whole flush of the system, you did come with this little wrench and Essentially, just take this off and fill this up with brake fluid. And as you pump this, brake fluid goes through the line and will fill the master. You don't have to worry about it. But I would only do that for an entire flush. Otherwise, just filling the master like I did just to do a quick bleed, that's what I would keep doing. All right, so here's the old one, right? I've already indented it twice. Nothing. So here's a brand new one. Quick little test fit. Yep. All right, cool. I don't usually add any Loctite to it. I don't want to go right to red. But let's put quite a bit of, if it'll come out. Oh. There is a very exorbitant amount of blue in there. <laughs> Probably too much, but I guess maybe not, you know. All right, I staked the living crap out of that. Torqued it, blue Loctite, just bled it. I'm running these H&R uh, 10 mil spacers for anybody that is curious. I could probably get away with eight, but they didn't sell an eight that I couldn't find, and the 10 has been fine. And then my hub ring. There we go. All right, so it's 8.05 a.m. Uh, driver's meet's at 9.30. We're about to head out. It is 35 degrees outside. I think the high's going to get to 50. It's pretty chilly, but got the new Nexen uh, tires on. Car is... Good to go, and for anyone else that's curious, right? This is just a simple, it's just kind of got stuff there, helmets, just ready to pack, and we're ready to go. Uh, meet me out there a little bit later with the S2000, but let's get on the road and hope this chilly day warms up just a little bit. Here we are, it snowed last night. As you can see, most of the snow is still sticking there. The road looks relatively good. No snow is really on that. Let's hope the track is good.
right, so here we are now, caught up to current days. Practice three was good. I had a buddy come out. Uh, tires were, again, very old, as I mentioned, but still had a good time. Just it is what it you know was. And with the passenger, you also don't want to go as, I don't want to push the car as much. So now we broke back into the 134s consistently throughout the whole day, a couple of 133s. I just showed like, what I thought maybe the most inter interesting session because the 135, the rear end kind of came out a little bit. Um, and then I got a 133, 134 that session. So we're gonna keep going for that. The next end, uh, tires felt fantastic. And as you can see, this is a whole day and the spray paint is holding up. So that Rust-Oleum stuff, screw it, never using it. Um, as you saw, it started out really snowy. So I mean, it got like, the car got dirty, the windshield got junk all over it. Uh, quick wipe, but the weather ended up being fantastic. I haven't even unloaded the car yet. But uh, it was fantastic. It ended up being the scramble button does do something. It gives me two PSI. Uh, and I'm trying my best to do the equation because the Honda data is outputting, I want to say it outputs like seven PSI, or sorry, excuse me. It outputs like a, a bar rating. So I'm having to do some formulas to go back and forth. So the boost, I want to say in that reached like nine and a half. But I think the Honda data, data log shows it reaches like nine or eight. It is what it is. It's close enough. It's good for continuity for the videos. So I'll keep the same formula. It is what it is there. Car still performed great. Um, the actual nut, as you can see, still looks good. So we're all right there. I know some people think that's crazy, but I've met a community of people that it does come loose on. So I don't, I don't know, man. I'm going to keep it there and we'll see where it goes. Uh, I'll just keep taking the center cap off and monitoring it, but Everything with the car has been performing well. So the tires liked uh, 29 PSI, 29.30, hot. That's what that lap was at. And the car just, it's gripped. Um, not knocking the air once. Uh, there's a lot of driving, you know, things that I need to work on always. And I took a lot of it into account this time, which is probably why I got a better lap time. But if I can explain this in these most simplistic terms, and I wish I was more knowledgeable uh, just in general, with how to explain this, but the, so the 660s, when I ran those, they, for lack of better words, you would turn the car, you, you, the turning was just very like sloppy feeling. Like you would turn, the car would kind of like turn and then it would like, then it would like catch and you like, okay, cool, I got grip. If that makes any sense. Uh, but I ran them for, I don't know, three sets. Uh, then I went over to the AR1s and they kind of did the opposite. You would turn it, it would kind of like just turn. It just felt better. Um, these, these next ends so far, I feel like when I turn, this is the first set, this is the scrub in, if you will. Uh, but when you turn in, they sort of, they don't have like any roll or nothing. They just kind of immediately go and it feels like it wants to continue turning. Um, maybe that's good or bad, but you know, if you're making a left, it goes immediately where I point it and it wants to keep going left. So you got to really kind of like hold on. I guess, and just tell it what you want it to do, and it just seems overly responsive in a good way. So with that said, for any of those other of you that do track, I threw the temps and everything else up on the screen so you can kind of just get a good look. Temps were all good. Uh, it was like a 55 degree top temp out of the day, um, and the only temp, and I did run all the fans just to see what it would do. Cool and temp never, I think, went above 183, which is insane. Yes, it was cold out, but it worked out great. The only temp that went up was oil, which hit like maybe 215. Uh, and it is not ducted anymore, right? It was never really ducted, but there's no openings for it in the bumper. So all I'm relying on is it's all blocked off. So all I am relying on is literally just the, uh, <laughs> it's a little tiny fan that's on it. And it's not a good fan. It's a spout fan, but it's a little, it's a little tiny guy. It's like a two inch, two and a half inch or something. But uh, I'm not going to address it until temps are concerning. So everything else was cool. Uh, that's about it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to try to figure out when the season starts to make more of like a, a series and just kind of give a good video of what the cars are in the class. I'll tell you the time is they're running versus what I'm running. Uh, Cause there's a lot of cars out there and it's, I mean, it's a lot of just driver ability, right? And I'm not pushing the car nearly as hard as it should or could, but uh, I think it's be neat for you guys to see what other cars are in the class that I'm in and so forth. But we'll end it there. I know this is a video that's all over the place. I'm, I keep saying, I'm going to try to, I don't know, be more consistent on videos and make them more like a story. So we'll see when the season starts, if we can keep that as more of like a story and I'll keep you up to date with the times and how the session and the, the league, if you will, is going. But that's it for now. I appreciate everybody for watching. Again, any questions, comments, concerns down below, uh, throw them in there and uh, I'm open to anything.